Hi, it's Chester Tugwell at Blue Pecan Computer Training, and in this video, we're going to look at formatting a cell based on the value in another cell. So we're going to look at a number of scenarios here. The first one is where we have some sales amounts, and we want to measure them against this target. So if the sales amount has met the target, it will change to one color. And if it hasn't met the target, it will change to another color. And we want this to all be kind of automatic. Now, just not to confuse issues, I'll just take the current background color off. That'll be font color, not a good idea. Let's do background color. And what I'm going to do, first of all, is I'm going to select all of the cells that I want to potentially format. Then what I do is I go up to the Home tab on my ribbon. And about halfway across, I look for the conditional formatting button. Click on that. And then there are loads of rules that you can use in here. And we're going to use this option here, Highlight Sales Rules. And essentially what we want to do is we want to say, we want to ask the question, is the first sales value, which is Bob's sales value, is it greater than or equal to the sales target we have in E2? Now, if I look down this list, I can't see any mention of greater than or equal to. I've got greater than, but that's not quite what I want. So I'm going to go down to more rules at the bottom. And I get this little dialog box. So I can now say format only sales with a cell value greater than or equal to. And then I'm going to click into this box. Now, this is the important part. I could type the 50,000 in here. But then it's not linked to this cell. So say, I don't know, next year I change my sales target to 60,000. I would want to compare these values against that new sales target. So essentially I want the conditional formatting that I'm setting up to be responsive to whatever is typed in here. So rather than hard coding the value, I'm going to click into that cell reference. And there you are. You have the cell reference. You have some dollars in there. Keep the dollars in there. That's just fine. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the format I want to apply if this rule is met. So I can go to Format here. And I've got a number of tabs across the top. If I want to change the background color, I go to Fill. I'm going to say Green Background. And then I'll choose a font color. Change it from Automatic to White. Click on OK. I get a little preview there. Click on OK. So I can see then that all of the values that are greater than or equal to 50,000 have got a green background. Now to do the opposite, to change the cell colors for those values that are below 50,000, I keep the selection, conditional formatting, highlight cells, rules, and I go straight to less than. Less than, get rid of that value here. This is just like an average value of the values that are selected. Click in that cell address, E2. I can go with the default formatting here, or I can create my own. So I'm going to go to Custom Format and go for a red background, and I'm going to go for white text. Click on OK, click on OK, and there we have it. So if I change this amount now, let's say I changed it to 80,000, then I get a lot more red cells and only a few green cells. OK, so let's move on to some more examples. So. Um, with this, we're going to do something a little bit more evolved. Rather than changing the background color of the cell, we're actually going to apply an icon to the cell. There's three possible icons we're going to apply based on this target here. OK, so I'm looking to sell at least 2,500 of each item. And I'm going to stop um, stocking the product if it falls below 80% of the target. So let's select those cells, control shift down arrow, control backspace. And I go to conditional formatting, icon sets. And these all look fun, but they're not gonna quite do what we want to do. We've got to go down to more rules. So I'm interested in here in the type of icon set I'm using, and I'm going to select the ones that have a cross, an exclamation mark, and a tick. And you can see the current rules. It's kind of said anything that's uh, the top third of the values here gets a green tick, middle third 
uh, an ember, exclamation mark, bottom third, a red cross. Well, that's not relevant to what we're doing. I'm going to change both of these to formula. Always change the type of rule you're creating before you change the value. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to say we want a green tick when the value is greater than or equal to our target. You need one. Then we want an exclamation mark when the value is greater than or equal to 80% of the target. So we would say that it's E1 times 80%. So it'll give us 80% of that value. Then anything underneath that will get a red cross. Okay, and you can see there that we get the appropriate icon applied to the unit sold. So for the final example, we want to conditionally format these cells here with little arrows based on the values in these cells. So um, we want an up arrow if there's been an increase in sales between January and February, red arrow pointing down for decrease, and a horizontal amber arrow if the sales value stays the same. Now we will need to do a formula in here to calculate the difference between the months. Let's take away those two values. Don't worry, we won't show those values once we've applied the conditional formatting. So with all those cells selected, conditional formatting, uh, icon sets, more rules, and we're going to choose our arrows. So the type of rule here is number, so we change that first. And we say we want a green arrow when the value is greater than zero. Greater than zero rather than greater than equal to. And then an amber arrow would be where the value is zero, if there hasn't been a change like here. Um, now, there isn't equals in that list, but effectively this is equals because we already have this line here that caters for anything that's greater than. So we leave that as it is, greater than or equal to. And also this is taken care of, the red down arrow, because that can only be less than zero. So we click on OK, and you can see that we get all the arrows. Now, I did say that I'd get rid of the numbers, so back into it, Manage Rules, Edit Rule. And all you need to do is tick this little box here, Show Icon Only, click on OK, and you've got your arrows. OK, that's all there is to it for this video. Thanks very much for listening. Don't forget to subscribe if you find this stuff useful. See you in the next video.